All right, guys. Thanks again for tuning in. And we are joined by my man, Maine the Medicine, here in studio. So yo, yo. thanks for stopping by, Maine. We want to do a, uh, a little interview with him, and then we're going we're gonna to do a freestyle here in a couple of minutes. So to kick things off, what inspired you to start rapping and kind of develop your style? Uh, I would say like having older cousins, like my mom was the oldest, but all her siblings had kids before her. So I had all these older cousins to follow under as far as what they was wearing, listening to and everything. So like I had the front row view of Run DMC and, and, and all these records, Beastie Boys and, you know, early LL, all of that stuff. So that's what got me into it. Plus my cousin Sudan, you know, he's from Queensbridge. He used to rap and he used to rap with, 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 with uh, Black Poet and, and Hot Day and, and with Shan and all them back in the days and stuff. So like watching him, cause like that was like the closest I was getting to a rapper, like a real rapper watching him. So that's what inspired me to start. What's your creative process when you're putting a record together, putting together an album? Uh, I would say like uh, I don't try to force it. Like I, I go through the the beat to uh, the the beat, and whatever that beat draws out of me, that's what I work on. So if that beat gives me a vibe to talk about, like some serious life stuff then that's where i go uh if it tells me to like make a record about the ladies or something that's that's where i go like you know that's i follow where the beat takes me you know so so you talked about some of those artists before what uh what are some of the artists you think that have influenced you who are your favorites things like that uh, I would say definitely um, Nas and Redman. Um, uh, Nas, like, just, like, being able to, like, kind of be close and seeing Nas from spending summers in Queensbridge. But I, I mainly saw uh, his brother Jungle and Wiz the most because they used to always be in my, my cousin house and, you know, and, like, uh, if if you're a real big Nas fan and you listen to all his albums, my my cousins, uh, well, rest in peace, Bar Kim. But my my cousin is Bar Kim and Sudan. So if you ever heard Nas albums, you always heard him uh, shout out uh, Sudan and shout out uh, Bar Kim. You know what I mean? So so like I kind of always had like a, a front row seat, and then I remember when. Um, Back to the Grill again came out, so my cousin was like, "Yo, my man is on this this record, you know." Um, back to and he was like, he was like, "Yeah, he was on." Cause I was like, "Was he on you know, live at the barbecue?" He was like, "Yeah, yeah," and and now he's on uh, Search's joint, you know. So that that got me hyping the listening to it, and once I started like listening to Nas, it was it was over. And then with Red Man, it's like. My favorite group is EPMD, so now here come Redman. It's like he was just the metaphors and the way he was spitting was like so different than everybody else. And then like, I don't know, like my early time of rapping, even up to now, people will say, oh, you sound a little like Redman, you know what I mean? So, And I never took it a certain way. I, I took it as a compliment because it's one of my favorites, so, you know. Yeah, I mean, definitely Nas is, is at the top of my list. And uh, like we were talking about the other day, Redman, I kind of not found out about him, but started listening to more of him later on. And that's when I really started to realize how great he really was. So kind of going back to Nas and Live at the Barbecue, Stillmatic, and looking at the guys that produced on that album where where boom bap and underground hip hop kind of came from as far as guys like Pete Rock making the beats and and, and that that type of producer premiere um what do you think about the the era of hip hop that we're in right now compared to what 
everybody, including myself, calls the golden era of like the mid to late '90s, early 2000s. Uh, where do you where do you see things going uh, as far as where we kind of came from? Uh, so I, I don't want to sound like a hater, like everybody else, but it's like the reason we talk about the golden era is because it, it wasn't just it, it was everything. It was it was the beat. It was the the lyrics, but it, it was also the artists. Everybody was different because everybody we listened to in the golden era wasn't lyricists, you know what I mean? But like they they brought something creatively different. Like yeah, you might have some people that might could be compared to each other, but they wasn't trying to be compared to each other. You know, everybody was trying to have their own lane, their own style. You know what I mean? Like not, now with, with hip hop, everything sounds the same. And it's like there's there's gems out there. Like there's there's definitely like I love the Joey Badasses. I love, um, you know, J. Cole is a, is a, is a mon- like, you know, even Drake. And I know. You know, people take shots at Drake now, but I've I've been listening to Drake since his early mixtapes, and you can tell how much of a hip hop head he was. E- even when they used to show him when he was on Degrassi, even that even that video that was um going around with him rapping, he's rapping verses from the Fuji's album. You know what I mean? Like, you know, like so most young kids is not rapping from the food like these kids now and 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 here, here's the problem I, I don't mind growth i don't mind everybody um having their own thing but when when it when people get mad that killer mike one and they like who is that 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 shows the issue because so even in our era we so we love like i love rock i love Big Daddy Kane, all of them. And it's like, that was my cousins in them era, even though I love those artists. But then, like, when you really get into your own, that's when you claim the Nas and Jay-Z's and all that. But you studied Rakim, Kane, KRS-One. You know about Run DMC, Fat Boys, uh, 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 Grandmaster Flash, you, you know all of them where you can have a conversation about any of them artists. You know what I mean? These new kids, they don't do they they don't want to do their homework. So they don't know who Outcast is or who um Wu Tang is. Like they don't they don't know any of that. So like certain records they hear, like like even the the, the future song with, with, with Kendrick. They love that beat, but Master Ace used that beat. That was the easy E beat. You know what I mean? And um I think Kanye used that beat. You know what I'm saying? But they don't know that. To them, they think, oh, Metro Boomin just made that beat. Like that's, you know. So that that's the thing. I I feel like they don't do their history on the music they getting rich off of. They they not doing their history to know that if it wasn't for some of these artists. They wouldn't be in the position they're in now. You know what I mean? So, and I think if, and I don't want to spend too much time on the the Kendrick Drake battle, uh, but I think that what I saw here is if I go back to Ether and Takeover, I go back to Nas versus Jay Z, right? And everybody was waiting for those for those tracks to come out everybody wanted to hear what they're going to say but at the end of the day the winner was determined by the lyrics right i think that nas won that battle with the lyrics i don't think that kendrick necessarily bodied drake but i think social media said we don't like drake everybody hates drake kendrick kendrick won this battle now i'm not saying he didn't win the battle and uh, you know, I said I said before, he I, I think Pusha T, I think he won against Drake. He I think he went out and, and bodied him. I mean, he's a he's a skilled lyricist. He's one of my one of my favorites. Um, 
But you know, back back when you had Ether and Takeover, guys were talking about that in the barber shop. It wasn't social media. It wasn't Twitter. You know, everybody talking on on there, determining who the who the winner was going to be. So I think there's a big difference as far as how everything is perceived, and and there's just so much access to everything nowadays compared to uh, you know 10, 15 years ago. So see with me, and I, I, I I'm glad to have to be on the platform that you you know you created here because. That whole thing was driving me nuts. I was putting out little clip videos, but you can't always get out what you want to say. And I like I love both artists. You know what I mean? And my my thing was I felt like, yeah, Kendrick's more lyrical and everything, but I felt like as if somebody told you Kendrick and Drake was gonna go at it, most people will probably say oh, Kendrick would have washed him, you know what I mean? And it took, like, him to finally make almost a hit record to try to take Drake, you know what I mean? Like, like somebody, for people not to appreciate Drake, I felt like Kendrick should have finished him in two records, but he kept coming back. So, like, and then I think Drake could have kept coming back, but somebody like him is like, what, what is this doing for me? Let me get back to making hit records that I've been doing for the past, what, almost 15 years? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like Kendrick will leave for like three years, then come back. You know, certain artists will leave, come back. Drake's been there. Like imagine constantly keep making records and keep making hits like, you know, you know what I'm saying, and I think you no, know, we, we in the kind of world where as much as everybody loved Kendrick now, and and what drove me nuts is even women are like, oh yeah, Kendrick, Kendrick, you know, for the culture, I love the lyrics. If everybody loved Kendrick, why why is the rest of this music out that we hear? You know what I mean. And now, when Kendrick drops his next album. Let, let's see if he can live up to the hype. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, Kendrick, he'll drop a couple of singles, and he's going to disappear again. You, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. know, that, that's how I look at it, you know. So getting back to you a little bit, Maine the Medicine, where'd the stage name come from? Uh, I, had, I had a couple of names. Uh, for a while, it was trips, like when I was in high school. And then um, I did a I think like in 2000, 2001, I did a mixtape and I called it The Medicine. You know what I mean? Because I felt like, you know, this was like the, the antidote, you know, <laughs> for the music, you know, back then. So then uh, my man, I think it was my man Laquan, he was like, yo, he used to call me yo Medicine. Yo, you know what I mean? Then I'm like, that kind of that kind of sound dope. So I just started running with that, and, and it, it stuck. You know what I mean? So, yeah. All right, nice. So we we debuted an exclusive on the show last week, and you've got Will Sully on there. You've got Legion on there. Tell us a little bit about that, and then we're gonna get into this uh, this freestyle. Um. So like, uh, my man Will Sully and my man Legion. We we part of a crew called IMF uh, slash Catacombs, and we, we pretty much been making music, and uh, we've been a crew for like almost almost thirty years. And then Legion and Sully, they they cousins, so you know, so we've been doing this for a while, and uh, you know, both uh, Leggy and Sully, they they both do uh, production all this time, so. Uh, Legend them produced for uh, Mike Geronimo, Shine. Um, right now he has a record with, uh, like two records with, uh, that he produced and, and he's on it with uh, D.V. Elias Christ. You know, if a lot of y'all remember him from back in the Smoother Hustler days and stuff, you know. Um, and the same thing with uh, Legend. He been producing for, you know, a lot of people and stuff. So like, you know, me and Leggy was like, you know, it's time for us to do 
you know, a project. And, like, you know, his philosophy, which I'm kind of taking it on, is, like, let, let's not do... I'm used to doing, like, 18-track albums and stuff like that, but I realize people don't have the attention span to listen to full projects. So we was like, yo, let's just do a EP. You know what I mean? So me and him did an EP. We knocked it out in, like... Maybe a month we recorded in uh, New York and Long Island. Shout out to Mike Laz, you know, and he, uh, my man Reggie, produced the whole uh, EP. And then uh, that first track, which is our first single, uh, "Lethal Medicine," is featuring uh, Will Sully. All right, so we're gonna get into that in a minute. Uh, before we do, what other projects can we expect from Maine the Medicine this year or coming up? Uh well <clears throat> I dropped uh the cloth in uh December which uh features uh tracks by yourself, you know, the the, the great DJ Gatsby, you know. And I um I have this project dropping June eighteenth, which is Lethal Medicine. Uh I have a, a project with This Is Hip Hop coming out right now we we have a couple of titles for the the album but we didn't narrow it down yet so but that that should be coming around like i would say september you know what i mean it's going to be uh probably about 10 10 joints you know what i mean so and me and him done a lot of uh uh tracks he's also on uh produced on my my album um and then i have uh a project coming with my man Duds. We don't have a, we don't quite have a, a date in mind, but it's it's something completely different from, from what y'all know me from. So, but when when it's time, I'll, I'll let everybody know. You know. All right, sounds good. Well, I appreciate you stopping by to do the interview. Now it's freestyle time. 